Let's go back to Washington because the House is set to vote this week on a nearly $2 trillion COVID relief bill. Yes, you heard that right, $2 trillion. Republicans say Democrats are stuffing political pork into the package, including things like a bridge to Canada, the minimum wage hike, and billions in funding for state and local governments. Critics calling the bill, quote, a liberal wish list. Louisiana Senator John Kennedy is a Republican on the Budget Committee. And of course, um, Senator, you always have a way with words. How would you describe this bill? Well, the bill's $2 trillion. Coming right behind it is another $3 trillion that President Biden wants for green infrastructure. Uh, the uh, profligacy is mind-numbing. The motto of the B Biden administration seems to be, we can't spend too much. Uh, any fair-minded person knows that that's a very uh, superficial, uh, desultory, almost infantile approach. E either that or the people advising President Biden have an opium habit. I mean, any fool can spend money. The, the, the objective is not to spend money. It's not how much you spend, it's what you spend it on. 95% of President Biden's bill is not going to even be spent until 2022 and beyond. This isn't a coronavirus bill. Uh, this, this is a left of linen neo-socialist wish list. I mean, it just is. It is chock full of spending porn. They've got money for transit projects and bridges and language preservation, uh, uh, billions for people who are in our country illegally. I am all for spending additional monies to, to uh, combat the coronavirus. But this bill isn't it. There are moderates in the House on the Democratic side, moderates in the Senate, who likely might feel the same way you do. Do you get a sense that this thing could go down? It could. Well, let me give you an example. We know we need to get our schools open. Uh, I, I would, if I were king for a day, and I, I'm not, don't aspire to be, I would call a press conference this afternoon and announce to all of our, our uh, school boards, I want you to open your schools. I want you to open your schools. There's nothing more important that we can do for the future of this country. Uh, the future of this country is, is its education. It's not the price of oil. It's not the unemployment rate. It's not who the president is. It's education. But we've, we have given K through 12 70 billion dollars to get their schools open. They've spent four. Mm -hmm. So why are we giving them hundreds of billions of dollars more? Well, and, now, and a lot of that would be spent through 2024 and all the way up yeah. through 2028. Now, now, now let me get in a plug. My state, Louisiana, our teachers, our, our uh, officials, our parents have done a great job. 70% of our kids are, are participating in in-person learning. But that number nationwide is 40%. And, and uh, President Biden has, has, I've used this expression before, but I can't think of a better one. He's flip-flopped on this issue like a bank catfish. He needs to call a press conference this afternoon and, and look our school uh, leaders in the eye and say, now by God, open your schools. We're going to lose a generation of kids here. A couple things here. Senator Schumer, uh, call for number two, guys. Here's a soundbite from yesterday. Watch. We need to pass this bill. The American people, the American public demands it. And everyone is going to have things that they want to see in the bill, and we'll work hard to see if we can get those things in the bill. Oh, well, so you got the piece out by Mitt Romney in the Wall Street Journal, Rob Portman, Republican from Ohio, Washington Post. Biden promised bipartisanship. That rhetoric has not been matched by action. We're going to have some more time to talk about this before it comes for a vote. But Xavier Becerra is um, right now uh, in the crosshairs of a Senate committee. Uh, there have been strong disagreements on behalf of Republicans for his support for partial birth abortion. Uh, he runs to, wants to run HHS. He's not a doctor. He's come under heat for that as well. Uh, do you see this nomination going forward? I hope not. He's not qualified. Um, I'm not saying he's not a good politician, but uh, he, he, he doesn't know the first thing about the subject matter, which he is being asked to manage. And uh, I, I think this is one of President Biden's uh, most ill-advised nominations. Well, Senator, thank you for your time. Hope you come Love back soon. You. Thank you so much. Plenty to talk about. Thanks. Thank you.